In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you inspired your servant Luke to reveal in his gospel the love and healing power of your Son. Give your church the same love and power to heal and to proclaim your salvation among the nations to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our healer, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all of the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all of the, in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been, been been fulfilled in your hearing. These are, these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Gospel of Luke was written, we believe, by a man named Luke, who never met Jesus, but who heard and believed the stories of all that Jesus did. Luke was a friend of Paul, and so he traveled with him as Paul established new church communities in places flung far and wide. And there are just a few fleeting references to Luke in letters that were written to the early church. So first, in the letter to the Colossians, Paul refers to Luke as the, quote, beloved physician, which leads us to believe that Luke was a doctor and a healer. And in the second letter to Timothy, we hear that Luke is sitting at Paul's side during Paul's imprisonment in Rome. But I think we know Luke best through the gospel that he penned. Each version of the four gospels, of course, tells us a particular story of who Jesus was emphasizing different aspects of his ministry. And Luke's gospel carries with it a unique concern for the poor and the marginalized, for all of those who are left behind by the way our world is structured. I imagine that as a physician, Luke would have had a particular awareness of the wounded of the world. Each time he journeyed through town, Luke must have witnessed the many ailments, particularly of those who lived on the lower rungs of society's ladder. Then, as now, healthcare was not free. Only those with money could receive treatment, and single women, widows, and orphans were dependent on family members taking them in to care for them. 
We see such a similar situation here in our own city and in our nation, where health concerns can quickly compound with other vulnerabilities and lead to terrible situations. I think, for instance, of the young homeless person who has been struggling with mental illness and ends up on the street. Or of the shelter resident who is haunted by PTSD from the time they spent in the war. Or I think of the workers who have a back injury and then got addicted to painkillers and their lives can begin to spiral. Without a social safety net, health issues spiral quickly into poverty or homelessness. Luke was keenly aware of the need for healing for every soul he encountered, as well as society as a whole. And so perhaps this is the reason that Luke tells the story of Jesus' ministry differently than any other gospel writer. Only in Luke's gospel is Jesus born to a poor teenager from a backwater town. And only in Luke's gospel does Jesus launch his ministry with the words we heard in today's reading. reading. He's echoing the poetry of the prophet Isaiah. God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Having made this bold proclamation of the complete overturning of societal ills, what does Jesus do? He goes out among the people to teach, but also to heal one suffering soul at a time. He unfurls a withered hand. He quiets the seizures of a young child. He stops the bleeding of a woman who's been bleeding longer than she can remember. He touches those whose faces are marred with leprosy. Jesus shows us that every one of us deserves healing, even those the world has given up on. The restoration of the whole world, it turns out, begins with a single soul. Each one of us moves through life bearing wounds of some kind, and only you know what those wounds are. Some of us struggle with physical illness, an injury that still gives you trouble, pain that just won't go away, or a sickness that's made you weak or changed your understanding of who you are. For others, it's mental or emotional wounds that bind us. The dull roar of depression that drains away your energy, or anxiety that keeps your mind running in circles at late at night when you're trying to go to sleep. And sometimes it's the past that's inflicted scars that we still carry with us, or sometimes it's fear of the future that keeps our hearts bound. Whatever wounds or scars you carry, whatever illnesses you've faced or live with or have overcome, Jesus is reaching out to touch that withered place, to mend the broken heart, to heal the body, mind, and spirit. In God's world, no one is left behind or forgotten. Every soul is worthy of healing. Every soul receives grace overflowing. God is not a magician. God does not make illness disappear. But God is a restorer of souls. And where your heart needs mending, God will enter in. Take a moment to imagine that place in your own mind, your own body, your own spirit, where healing is needed, and invite God to restore you. We know it's true that hurt people hurt people. But I think the opposite is true as well, that healed people heal people. Or maybe we should say that healing people heal people, because I don't really believe that any of us is ever fully healed. We live rather as people who are in the process of healing. Jesus knew this as he traveled through Galilee, tending to one broken soul at a time. The people he healed went on to tell their own stories. 
They became living symbols of a God whose love extends to those we've forgotten. A God who yearns for the release of the chains of imprisonment, the freedom of all who are captive, and good news for the poor. Living as healing people, we can bring restoration to the world, bit by bit, one soul at a time. Here we stand in a world that is racked by a pandemic, in a nation that's lost so many more lives than were necessary. It's not the first time that we've looked past, looked over, or ignored an epidemic. And it's not the first time that we've seen the devastating toll of living life as a nation that cares little for those who have no safety net. Living as healing people means being invited to mend our hearts, mend our souls, and when possible, our bodies, and then turning and reaching out to mend a broken world. Today, on the feast day of St. Luke, I pray for the presence of the physician and healer, the one who remembered the least of these, to be with you. I pray for healing for whatever wound you carry in heart, mind, body, or spirit. I pray for protection as we continue to persevere through this pandemic, weary from quarantine and often cut off from those we love. May God grant us safety, protection, patience, and steadfastness. May God make us whole, every soul, and the whole world. Amen.
And now hear this blessing. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen.